Hi, Misha here, and since I haven't done many black boxes recently, did one last week, I'm doing another one here. Mostly just wanted to step outside. Um, your daily weather report, it was actually quite cool here, but it's uh, not too bad now. Seems like it's warmed up a few degrees in the last week. But, um, yeah, as we end November here and cross into December, See how this last month of 2023 goes. I gotta admit, 2023 has kind of been a bitch of a year for me personally. You know what's happened, and I mentioned this in several black boxes. You know, it, most people went back to life with uh, this year. You know, COVID's over and all that. Unfortunately, a lot of that means people have moved away, kind of gone on to other things. If nothing else, everyone's so busy now that for me, in a lot of ways, I feel you know more disconnected and more lonely now than I did during COVID. And I get it, people are really having to work more for oh so many reasons. So I'm not sad or upset about this. If nothing else, my life has taught me to, you know, accept things that you just can't change in the reality of things still it has been a hard year and it really has been a year of a lot of false hope and promises i talked about that you know things but a lot of things that were supposed to happen this year people promised this and that just completely vaporized you know job opportunities that kind of thing I, again, I think it has to do with everyone trying to get back to work after being down for two and a half years and maybe overestimating what can be done. I also just think some people are just bullshit artists and just say before they think. I'm actually thinking of a particular job opportunity that was they pursued me last year and then poof, just disappeared this year. And another couple of close friends of mine have had even worse uh, things happening without getting into their details. I don't know. But, you know, sometimes it's just life. Sometimes we have to change things, and sometimes we just kind of have to endure. So, so be it. What else is going on? Well... As I mentioned in the previous black box, started work on the cabin finally. So at least maybe that's getting somewhere after a couple of false starts and, <laughs> yeah, bull uh, bullshitting from other people. So, we'll, you know, I'm more optimistic about it now than I was, say, six months ago. At least something has happened. Um, last weekend, I... I've been having issues with my desktop computer. Not hardware, just software, like the Windows install. It was just acting squirrely. And I already tried doing a factory refresh about yeah, three, four months ago. And it didn't really seem to fix everything. So, kind of an exasperation. I thought instead of reinstalling Windows from the hard drive, the onboard backup partition, let's download a fresh copy of Windows 11 from the cloud. Again, it was kind of a Hail Mary thing. I'm just like, I don't know. And it's really difficult for me to explain to you what it was doing. It was mostly speech-related stuff, just lagging here, crashing there, where it really shouldn't have been. Uh, wasn't really working for live streams and things. I just stuff. The, uh, the microphone jack wasn't working. That was, we had some weird audio issues. Um, I, don't, I don't know. But uh, much to my surprise, it actually worked. The fresh install of Windows, not from the hard drive this time, but from the cloud. It's been about a week, and it's running a lot better. It's able to do live streams now. My speech isn't crashing near as often. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. In fact, I will say this week, I've been kind of a tech problem solver. I've had a lot of things pop up and then fixed them. Kind of got live streaming down for the most part. Figured that out. 
Um, I feel like it's been a productive week. Uh, ran into problems and then found solutions. Even did a test YouTube shorts for the main Mishiko channel. I, it's ridiculous that a one minute video took me longer to do than a standard video because good God, one minute passes so fucking quickly. No wonder TikTok is, I mean, I, I, there, there's no way to convey any information of any depth in one minute, none at all. So you're pretty much restricted to just a joke or something just really silly. And I think that definitely shows on places like TikTok. It might be useful for like preview videos. I was thinking about maybe doing that, you know, when there's an upcoming video, a big one, maybe do a, a short as, as a one minute preview or highlights reel. I uh, I don't know. The, the problem with shorts though, they don't pay at all on YouTube. I mean, YouTube makes money, but you have to have hundreds of shorts up to make any money at all because I think they only run an ad every five shorts that someone watches. Maybe it's every ten shorts. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a fucky thing. So trying to just rely on shorts for anything is not going to be helpful. So my thought is maybe I can use it to get people to watch my regular length videos. I was happy to see that the video I put up is kind of a joke. <laughs> the ten and a half hour Starfleet Starships video actually has about uh, 2,000, 2,500 views. That's pretty good for this personal channel, so that was cool. <laughs> As I said in a comment on that video, I, I, I took almost two full weeks to record that video. Because it's not just recording, it's getting all the ships down, dusting them, excuse me, and then putting them back up. It took time. So, with that investment in time, oh yeah, I was going to recycle the footage at least once. And I've recorded a couple other videos while I had the Star Trek stuff down. I brought my Battlestar Galactica stuff back down. I, I think, pound for pound, that's my favorite Eagle Moss collection. I, I don't know. I just, it makes me happy every time I get the Battlestar Galactica ships down. What I would really like to see would be a Babylon 5 collection. De Agostini or Master Replicas. I don't know who has the rights, but this would be a good time because they just re-released um, The Road Home, the animated Babylon 5 film. I don't talk about Babylon 5 much because pretty much the whole time I've done this channel, up until 2023, there's been nothing new in the Babylon 5 universe to talk about. And even then, there haven't been any real figures or ships or anything to support it, which is a shame, but that show was always an underdog. You know, the original show did okay. Barely made it to five seasons, though. And uh, every time they tried to do a spin-off like Crusade, he got canceled, or even worse, Legend of the Rangers. You know, I saw people kind of pan that one, but the thing is, for a premiere, for a pilot, it wasn't bad. I think there could have been potential there. Although I have to confess, by that point, any new Babylon 5 would have been good. Plus I had it under a Cthulhu's in it. But anyway, just kind of on the top of my mind. The good news is, Master Replicas did recently announce they are continuing the Stargate collection. So that made me happy. Um, you know, I recently did a video on the uh, F-302. And they just put up the X-303, the Prometheus for pre-order, due in next month. And that's neat. They're also doing the Asgard ship. I'm not sure which exact variant, but cool. And uh, I think they're doing the Puddle Jumper. I'm not as into... I mean, I like the littler ships just fine, but I like the big ships. I, I've, it's just like with the, with the Battlestar Galactica stuff. I love my Vipers, but if you said you can only have your Vipers or your Battlestars, yep, take the Vipers. That's just how it is. But um, I think they've at least announced 10 more issues, and they already had the two plus the one they did. So I think there's at least going to be a 12 or 13 issue Stargate run, and hopefully it sells well enough. 
The only problem I see there is there's not a current really show or movie out for Stargate. Um, I really enjoyed the bulk of SG-1, <laughs> even last couple of seasons, because I was a Farscape fan since we first got the Sci-Fi Channel. Well, I say got the Sci-Fi Channel. That's a bit of a misnomer. I moved to go to college and got it, sort of. In my hometown, it wasn't carried on cable. But we only had the basic cable package. But what they did back then, they scrambled the screen on TV for channels you didn't have a subscription to or didn't pay for. They did not scramble the sound. You see where this is going? So, to me... I gave zero fucks. It was as good as free channels. Unfortunately, I lived with a girlfriend at the time, and it used to drive her crazy, even made her feel slightly nauseous to come in and watch me watching some weird acid trip kaleidoscope static thing on the TV. So I always think about that. But no, I really, um, really liked Farscape. So uh, with Ben Browder on Stargate, I, even though I recognize the last two seasons aren't near as good as the preceding ones, they had me hooked. Also, not gonna lie, when I was younger, Claudia Black might have been the reason I've started to find foreign accents so goddamn attractive. Just saying. <laughs> I definitely have a type when it comes to women, and they're definitely not wilting violets types at all. Daniels in distress. Nope. I always prefer women that can definitely look after themselves. Thank you very much. But uh, anyway, actually I lie. It was Rigel. I, I used to fap to Rigel. I mean, you did too. Don't 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 lie. <laughs> he was comic relief though. <laughs> ah, that's another show that barely managed to get four seasons and really uh, no spinoffs. At least we did get the Peacekeeper Wars. I know you could criticize it, but it was something. At least the show didn't end on a cliffhanger a la Firefly. But uh, I will confess, I was never a Josh Whedon fan, so I never get into Firefly. But that's okay. Can't watch everything, right? And since it got canceled so early, I was kind of happy I didn't invest my time and energy into it. I often wonder if the reason so many people love Firefly is because it just was starting. Um, <laughs> and then got canceled. It didn't get a chance to get fucked up. In fact, one video I'd like to do soon. I've, I've seen a, a few YouTube reviews recently claiming that the original Battlestar Galactica was clearly superior to the remastered, re-envisioned. And I find that patently absurd. Now, if someone says the original is their favorite, totally believe that. For example, Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars film. Even though I know Empire Strikes Back is better. Maybe even A New Hope is better. But emotional connection, Return of the Jedi is my favorite. So I can understand like being a child, Battlestar Galactica, emotionally invested in it. But if you look at it objectively... It's really campy. They're way too happy for people that just lost most of their civilization. It's got one or two good music songs and the rest kind of Baltar. Well, very enjoyable as both a Klingon and a psychotic human is just hamming it up to the rafters. Plus, the new Baltar played Jean-Luc Picard's father. So, I mean, there's some verisimilitude for you. Uh, but no, I think that may, uh, would be a fun video to really be honest. And the reason I think when you read people talking about the reimagined Battlestar, most really enjoyed the miniseries in season one. And I think if it had cut there, that it would have been like Firefly, where they're just like, oh, it was so good. Well, you see people start to complain is season three and four. Now, personally, I don't think they're that bad at all. I do agree season three lost itself a bit and felt meandering but I also think after the whole new Caprica affair that was partially intentional because meandering and wandering and forget what the fuck to do 
was exactly what both the sidelines and the humans were feeling after the whole debacle. Plus, you know, they left with about 50,000 people in the miniseries. After New Caprica, they had fewer than 30,000. So an already tiny population was, was halved. And you see the beginnings of the Cylon Civil War, where uh, Al from Quantum Leap is a bastard. And he's fighting a uh, Xena warrior princess. And, uh, I don't know, entertaining. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't hate season three. And I really like the ending because, god damn it, Jimi Hendrix is a great song on person. And that, that cracked me up when they did that at the end of season three. It made me happy. Season four, I love the the balls it took to go to Earth and just be busted as fuck. And then you kind of get to that meandering again. What do we do? And then the, the mutiny with, uh, with Gata. I thought that was great. And some people hated the finale. I really loved it. Full disclosure, when I watched it, I was in, in, in my cups pretty, pretty deep with a friend who also liked the show. So we watched it together, a little bit of a watch party. So good memories there, you know, associations. As for the original Battlestar... It was canceled after season one. But I've read claims online about what they were planning for season two. And if those were even half true, ooh, I don't think people would have liked it. I'm getting vibes of when Buck Rogers kind of changed directions in its season two. It, like that. Yeah, a lot of those shows really didn't go well. Come to think of it, of that era... Star Trek Next Generation was one of the first successful ones to really make it and not sell out or change its attitude or whatnot. But yeah, I'd like to do a Battlestar. I just, again, it's a property I really enjoy. And I like the original show, but I also recognize it's more nostalgia than actual quality. Plus, I like that uh, Apollo appears in the reimagined and even becomes vice president. <laughs> <sighs> what else? Mostly been ignoring political stuff. Don't really care. Got I got my own life to handle. And uh, trust me, it's more than a handful. Uh, all the cats are doing well. No, nothing there. Hoping I'll be able to make it to see family over the holidays for a bit. We'll see. The, the gun world. I do have some stuff there. October was probably the slowest I can recall the gun world being since I became an FFL in 2009. That's saying a lot because I've been through quite a few slumps. It was bad. It's not awesome now. But at least it picked up in November Thank God. So I have been trying to buy new inventory. The new guns are not what is selling, especially AR-15s. Forget about it. But the old guns, the old military guns. I just sold the 1903, uh, Remington 1903, you know, the, the World War II version of the Springfield tonight. And I uh, had a pretty good M1 Grand sell a month ago. I sold a... Uh, Broom handle Mauser. Sold that HK VP70. The reason I'm selling a couple of personal guns is um, the cabin. I, you know, it's I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna cut too deep into the collection, but I, I'm gonna have to fund it somehow. So that, that's one way. The cabin that guns built. I mean, to be fair, the house we're in now. Most of the down payment for it came from me selling a few guns including one Valmet which kind of regret I don't know that's the wrong word I don't regret selling it I would do it over again in a heartbeat but I do regret that that was the option again I made the right choice I just wish it, I didn't have to have made that choice but I got to keep my favorite Valmet and I uh, still have it and uh, that's that's not going anywhere that said I did sell that Valmet side folder that came into the store recently on a trade, I would have loved to have kept it. But 
again, the money actually from that was half of the deposit for building the cabin right there. So, you know, priorities. I'm hoping when it's done, it'll be well worth it. I'm, I'm sure it will be. There's a lot of things I want to do there. Shoot guns, yes, but also meet my family there. You know, do holidays and stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I did a recent video on the main Michiko channel about those Portuguese contract Mausers. Uh, I think they're actually really cool. Little spendy. I think Atlantic's got them for about a thousand. Nicer grade ones are twelve, thirteen hundred, but they're legitimate matching. At least the one I got, World War II Obendorf made Mausers, complete with the banner. I think that's pretty great. And on a couple of recent live streams, people have said I really need to try the Walther PDP. I've kind of put it off for a while, but I, I did break down because I found a really good buy on the law enforcement version. I will say this though, looking at Walther's catalog, they definitely took about 100 pages out of the Sig Sauer US book because they offer that PDP in every conceivable configuration, not just like black or gray or green. You can also get it in a quote, female version. Okay. Does it mean it comes with a pronoun card? I don't understand that, but okay. And there's all these different links. There's full size frame slash grip and compact frame grip. And then there's barrel links, four inches, four and a half, five. And the one I thought was funny was the compact grip with the five inch barrel. On the other hand, you can get the four inch barrel with the full size grip or anything in between. I ended up ordering the four and a half inch barrel with full grip and I got the LE model. And so it comes with three 18 round mags and night sights because you know, those would have been a fuckload of good. But no, I thought they were cool. I tend to buy the LE Walters because you usually get three mags instead of two. And even if the night sights don't do me any good, typically the night sight guns, the sights are steel, not uh, plastic. So yeah, looking forward to doing a review on that. Kind of had to put back doing a few videos this past week to work out my computer issues and kind of work out some fundamental issues getting live streaming done. But now that I've pretty much crossed all those bridges, I hope to get back to making more videos for this channel and the main channel really soon. In fact, kind of feel like I want to do another Star Wars Clone Troopers video. It's been a little while, and we've had some new troopers come out in the Black Series. There is a, a new ARC Trooper. Actually, a couple of new ones, but I, I bought Jesse. There's also Fives and... Uh, a few others but also neat there's a new version of the phase true two clone trooper on a newer body it's actually pretty great and then you've got oppo or apo i always want to call him a poo but i don't think that's his name recently i did that video on darth vader including the return of the jedi which i took way too long to get because amazon fucked me over talked about that in the video as I said a minute ago, Return of the Jedi is my favorite film. So I really did want the Vader you could take the mask off of and chop the hand off of. <laughs> I even told my mother that I finally replaced my Darth Vader because when I was a kid, my Darth Vader, my dog, ate his feet off. And it was weird because that dog never chewed anything. But I think because the old Kenner Vader was more of a vinyl material than plastic, and because my dog had like those nylon chewing bones, I think it confused him. So when I picked up my Vader one day, his feet were pretty much cut off at the knees. Looked like he'd been in a battle with Obi-Wan. So as a joke, I told her I finally replaced him 40 years later. But uh, yeah, that was fun. I don't know why, but summertime, I tend to think more Star Trek. Wintertime, I tend to think more Star Wars. I don't know. I, I, I thought about it in my head, and I have no explanation why. It's just kind of where my head goes, you know? Oh, well. 
Again, I wish there was Babylon 5. But I am looking forward to some Stargate. Stargate figures might be cool. I'd buy an Asgard or a Gould. <laughs> um, what else? No new Hobby Master models. To be fair, though, I did pick up quite a few in the summer. That's another thing. I tend to buy the airplane models in the summer and fall for some reason. Less in the winter. But nothing new there since then. Um, did that one Indiana Jones video. Probably do another one sometime. When the mood hits me. I don't really do things on a schedule or whatnot on this channel. This is just, you know, when I'm feeling it. That's the whole point. It always makes me happy when several people watch a video. But even if only 100 people are interested, that makes me happy too. Because doing these relaxes me, chills me out, makes me feel productive. In fact, that's why I'm doing this one now. I was kind of tired, but I thought, I need to do at least some video. So I don't feel like I'm kind of wasting my evening. So here you go. That's why it's just stream of consciousness, as it were. <laughs> uh, one more thing I need to do this year. I got a new desktop in, in uh, January, February. Did a video. I need to get a new laptop. Uh, there's a few reasons. One, I, I honestly need it for the tax write-off for the 2023 year. You know, business write-off. <laughs> it's always nice to have at least one expense like that when it's time to do your taxes another my current laptop which is a dell 7400 7400 latitude has been a great machine i've really enjoyed it the issue is i purchased it in december of 2019 so it's now four years old. That means, one, it's out of warranty, even extended warranty. And two, while it still has a decent battery, the battery that once was doing about eight to 10 hours is now dipping down to four to six, you know, and the, eventually the batteries kind of give out on those. That said, another reason is a family member, an older family member needs an, a laptop Nothing special, just you know, emailing. So I thought, well, I can give this to her, make her happy. I can get me a new one, kind of keep it up to date, better battery. And since I'm doing video editing, you know, when I bought my first one, uh, Jay was doing the video editing, so I didn't have to worry about it. I want one that I can do videos editing with, even when I'm on the go, because I'll be out at the cabin, hopefully. So, yeah, and the old one holding up great. But it only has 8 gigs of memory and there's no real way to upgrade it. And my text-to-speech, the newer versions that they're on, absolutely require 8 gigs. And that's not, you know, recommended. They recommend at least 16. So if I run my text-to-speech, which I kind of have to, there's really very little resources left over on it for video editing. So what I'm going to do, I've actually already done it, is... Uh, I'm going to get a new Dell. I, I looked around, but for business use, that kind of thing, not gaming, none of that, but for my use, I bought my first Dell laptop in the summer of 1998. And I've never had a stinker except one Dell laptop, and that was my fault because instead of buying it from a store or directly from Dell, I bought it on Amazon. This was years ago and it was reconditioned and I really didn't even know it was so I'm not gonna blame the company because Lord knows that laptops previous history it just never worked right mostly it was just really slow running my speech so I plan on getting a model 7440 which is kind of the modern replacement for the 7400 and I'll get the 32 gigabyte version Actually, the sales rep I talked to really tried to top me into a 16, saying it'll be plenty. I was like, look, again, you can't upgrade the memory. You're stuck with what you are. My current one has 8, and I'm already having resource problems. If I start editing videos in 4K, 16 is not really going to be enough. No, we're going to do 32. My desktop actually has 96, 
and uh, I've looked at the you know resource manager I think the most I've ever used on it so far is about 40 42 gigs but the only reason it has 96 is I found a good deal on RAM so I did no I think I lied to you I think that one has 64 because it came with 32 and I thought I bought putting the 64 that I found on a really good deal on top of the 32, but then I decided, no, that's not smart. So I took 32 out and put 64 in. So I, I, I'm, I apologize. I'm lying to you. But either way, I, that way the desktop and laptop aren't too far off. Um, I guess one fringe benefit when I upgraded to the 32 gig system, because it's all integrated, it kind of forced me to upgrade to the, from the i5 to the i7 processor. And that put me from 4.7 gigahertz, or gigahertz if you're Doc Brown, to uh, 5.2. So a little more power there. So that's not a bad thing. I didn't really need it, but that's okay. And it gave me the, uh, the all-metal chassis, which uh, I like. I, I had... Uh, quite a few latitudes in the past that were all metal but um, yeah at first the, the the price that the Dells sales rep quoted me was way above budget but it's amazing how much he was able to take off of it when I was like okay this is what I've got to spend me not needing a touch screen did save a decent amount too though because uh, again not only do I not need a touch screen it's actually counterproductive for me I guess I accidentally brush up against it and of course it uses more battery so and obviously I didn't need the highest uh, resolution version so I just got the lowest res I could which was like 1920 by 1200 so in some ways I can really save money when it comes to computers because things like that I don't need and it doesn't have a massive hard drive but then again my laptop doesn't need a massive hard drive that that's okay I've got external storage for that and my desktop has about uh, 30 terabytes all towed I've got four hard drives in it it was amazing how cheap hard drives have become I remember buying my very first one uh, terabyte drive and before that I remember buying my very first one gigabyte hard drive and before that I think the first actual like hard drive I bought not in a computer but you know, just a hard drive was uh, 220 megabytes. And then I coupled that with a 540 megabyte secondary drive on a computer. And I thought I was just rocking. I mean, I had nearly 800 gigabyte, uh, megabytes. <laughs> Woohoo! I also remember buying megabytes of RAM for about $100 a stick back when 100 bucks was real money. Back when you could go out and eat a really good meal for fifteen dollars maybe even ten dollars at a good burger joint so everything's in perspective so I'm looking forward to uh, trying that new laptop out I actually already have it which is funny because I only get off the phone with the Dell guy at like 4 p.m. the laptop came at 2 p.m. the next day it took 22 hours to get here and that was free shipping. That wasn't me paying for overnight. Okay. But I will need someone to help me get it set up, at least to get my speech on there. Once I get my speech on there, I'm good. So it's just sitting in the box. And I'll need to uh, clean my original 7400 for the family member and put a fresh Winders install on it for her. So it'll, it'll be probably a weekend project. But, again, with the whole cabin being built, hoping to be down there more. And, uh, yeah, four years is good service out of a laptop. Out of a desktop, I try to get at least six or seven. But even desktops. But, of course, the nice thing about a desktop, you can replace things. You, especially with the modern laptops, you really, really can't. Things are just straight up integrated now. So, certainly a buy once, cry once thing. I did look on Amazon too, and at first I got excited because I found some 7440s, even with 32 gigs of memory for under a thousand bucks on there. But, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, I'm a fucking dumbass. 
uh, they were refurbished, you know, renewed. Maybe they'd be fine. Maybe they would. But I didn't want to risk it. So I spent a couple hundred more and just bought it brand new. Again, the, the guy, Dale really knocked off because at first it was going to be over 2K. I was like, well, that's not happening today. Then he came back and <laughs> actually did all that, including giving me the, the 36 month warranty. I guess it does help that my account with Dell has literally been there 25 years. <laughs> it does give me a little bit of, yeah, and I also buy computers for another family-owned business, so I'm usually buying, on average, about one computer a year from them, but sometimes I'll need to buy four. Not for me necessarily, but you know, kind of, I'm kind of the family's computer person that does that stuff, so I don't know, maybe that had no impact on their decision maybe it did either way i got what i wanted for the price i was willing to pay so that that kind of excites me and again having the walter pdp come in oh and one other gun because we're all over the place you ever get really tired but you can't sleep so you just ramble well that's what i'm doing you're listening to me so hey which one of us is sillier but now another gun i ordered the hellion the springfield hellion done several videos on my 16 inch gun that I picked up right when they came out again that was thanks to uh, Sammy the Dwarf uh, who hooked me up with that or at least tell me hey I know where there's one out for sale so that was cool but um, there's the 20 inch version now with the bayonet lug and things and since I needed a little more on an order to get free shipping from a distributor they had three 20 inch guns left so I nabbed one I don't know if I'll keep my 16 or this 20. I'll need to see how the 20 shoots, but I will tell you, my 16 inch gun has been really good and reliable. On the other hand, I kind of have a soft spot for longer barrel bullpups. I've got the uh, 18 inch Trevor. I've got the 24 and the 20 inch barrel from my AUG. Yeah, I just, I like long barrel bullpups because that's, to me, the point. You can get the full benefit of a long barrel yet still be, you know, 26, 30 inches long overall. So that's another one I'm kind of excited to try out. We'll see how it goes. <sighs> Haven't really been able to do shooting this month, though, because it's deer hunting season and, um, the deer hunters around here claim that you'll scare off the deer by shooting a bunch of guns. I told them, I'll tell you what we should do. I'll shoot guns in a certain area, and I'll flush the deer out. I'll scare them from where I'm at, over to your land, and then you shoot them. We'll work together. <laughs> but um, that, that'll be over soon. Next week is the final rifle season, aside from a couple of special hunts and like a three-day Christmas hunt. But I'm not too worried about that. But... Since the hunters will be my neighbors out at the cabin, I, I want to keep on good terms, and I don't want to be an ass either way. I don't need to shoot that much, especially not at current ammo, um, ammo prices, so, yeah. But yeah, a lot of stuff's happening. It, it, honestly, the week before last, I was really stressed out. The cabin was on my mind, getting the money together. Did I pick the right builder? My wife was kind of unsure, uh, you know, if we were doing the right thing. Just, it was a lot on my mind, you know, second guessing. This week, even though quite a few obstacles have thrown themselves in my way, I, I guess I like being a problem solver. I like overcoming things. And this week's really let me do that. So, yeah, it's it's been a been a pretty good week not exactly fun or happy but it's nice when you work and you actually see the fruits of your labor and while sales aren't quite as good this week as they were the last two weeks i think a lot of people blew money on black friday there's still been enough selling to keep things interesting and i'm hoping that we'll have another good spike before christmas new year's You'd be amazed how many people buy a gun right before New Year. But um, next year is also an election year, and I am absolutely not ready for this election because it'll be a shit show. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. But t 
typically election years are pretty good for my business. Which is good because I need to not only build the cabin, but even with that money secured, I gotta furnish, furnish it. You know, when you buy a new house and you move, you got all your old shit. Yeah, you might buy a new couch or new bed for it, but you got your stuff. But I'm gonna have to furnish a whole new place. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff that um, that comes up. Of course, that I won't have to worry about that. The builder estimates four, five, six months, weather depending. So this is kind of a problem for springtime, Misha. But never too soon to start planning. So that's about what's been going on in my life. This is what I'm doing instead of sleeping. I feel like it's a good exchange. What do you think? What about your life? Anything been happening with Ewans, as my great-grandmother used to call everyone? Ewans? You know, you always think of y'all, which is common down here, but no, a real hillbilly way of saying it, real mountain folk way, was Ewans. Anyway, things you didn't know or care about. But yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys are up to as we cross from November into December and get ready for the hectic headaches of Christmas. But, uh, yeah. Hoping I will get to spend time with family. What are you, you going to do for the holidays? Any ideas yet or just too far out still? I have a question. How many of you still shop in person in stores for Christmas gifts versus just ordering online? My mother still shops in stores and it's funny because half the time she'll still have to just come home and order it on Amazon or Walmart or Target. Sorry, Target. I just, I'm skipping that middleman step and just ordering online. Except not Black Series Darth Vader's from Amazon now. <laughs> to Amazon's credit, I did order uh, Clone Trooper Jesse. And I believe I got the Phase 2 Clone Trooper on there too. And those both came in no problem. So, yeah, it just shit happens. That's just life. But, um, yeah, just thought I'd pop in to give a black box before we hit this weekend. As always, if you could, do uh, drop a comment, like, subscribe. Also, pitch in for the live streams. I've been doing live streams on the Mishiko channel. I think I've got most of the bugs worked out now. After last Sunday, kind of worked out a few of the final ones. So we should start going pretty, uh, pretty smoothly. My, my next step, now that I've learned how to do YouTube live streams, is to do um, StreamYard. Because I want to invite people on to stream with us. And I don't know if you can do that on YouTube. You know, people from other states. But, you know, we'll get there. With that, this is Misha. And also on behalf of the cats, we'll catch you very soon. Next time.